What's up guys? This week we got something special. I was just gonna make some pizza for us to and like for to eat and then I'll just show you guys the process, or whatever. But I'm gonna do something special for you. This is the recipe how to make basic, classic, New York style pizza. Today I'm gonna show you how to do the dough, and then tomorrow we'll put it all together. It's thundering outside. Tomorrow we'll pull it all together because the dough does have to refrigerate overnight for 24 hours. So for the dough, you need these five things. You need bread flour, instant yeast, sugar, olive oil, and salt. Let's get started. All right, so first up, we need four and a half cups of bread flour. Um, I will say that you do need bread flour and not all-purpose flour. It does make a bit of a difference and I would suggest that you get a higher quality flour such as King Arthur and not some like Food Lion brand or something like that. Get a good quality flour. Next up after the flour, we're going to put in one and one half tablespoons of sugar into our bowl. Up next we got a tablespoon of salt. Up next is our instant yeast. You want to use instant yeast because you can just mix it in with your dry ingredients and it's good to go. The active dry yeast, you have to like mix with water first and let it activate. You don't want that. You just want the instant yeast. So we're doing about two teaspoons. One. Two. Alright, so now we just need to mix these up in our food mixer. If you don't have a KitchenAid, you can use a food processor or you can also do it by hand. It just takes a long time. So now we're just going to incorporate all these little ingredients together with our dough hook. You just need to mix it together for about 30 seconds on like a medium setting. Now it's time to add our wet ingredients. Three tablespoons of olive oil. You can use extra virgin, normal, whatever you want. Next we're going to add 15 ounces of lukewarm water. Um, if you don't know what 15 ounces is, it's just under two cups. And again you want this lukewarm. You don't want it hot, but you don't want it cold. Right in the middle. Nice. Smooth. Right. Add this into our mixture. Now we're going to turn this on until a ball of dough forms. Alright, so as you can see, a, uh, a ball of dough has started to form. And you might need a spatula just to kind of like scrape stuff down as it's going. But now we're going to transfer this to a lightly floured surface. So you just take some flour, um, if you have any kind of mat, that will be great. If not, you can like thoroughly clean off your kitchen counter and use that if you have like granite or tile or something. Um, or you can use a cutting board if it's large enough. Just get nice and floured, that way when you put the dough on it won't stick. Also here's a trick, take a little bit of flour like this and rub it between your hands. Just get your hands nice and floury. Now, kind of just get the dough out. Come on, baby. Give me that pizza dough. Yeah. So you just take your dough, and what we're doing at this step is hand kneading it. And you see, you just want to get the dough in a kind of state where it's not sticking to your hands and fingers, because it can get really messy. All right, so what you want to do is just kind of like, literally just kind of like throw it down like that. And you can just kind of like press into it like this and then flip, like fold it back over, keep pressing, fold it over. Um, every once in a while you need to reflower your hands. You'll probably need to do this for about, depends how like hard you do it. You can probably do it for eight minutes or so. Sometimes it can take a long time, sometimes it goes by quick. And see how it's getting, it's getting kind of sticky to my hand again. So take a little bit more flour, kind of rub that all over. You need to do this until 
your pizza passes, it's called the window pane test. So the window pane test lets you know when your dough is ready to go in the fridge. So just grab it, you pinch it a little bit off like this. Oh, I need more flour. So you get your little pinch, whoops, get your little pinch. And you just wanna kinda of spread it out as if you're making a little mini pizza. Stretch it out. And here's the window pane test part of this. What you do is you kind of stretch it out like this. And it's not supposed to break. See how it, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. But it gets kind of transparent looking. And if it starts breaking like this, that means you probably need to knead for a couple more minutes. All right, so my, my dough's ready. It passed the window pane test. And so now what I'm gonna do is take this big old like log pizza dough and cut it up. Um, you might be wondering, Alex, that's a lot of dough. How many pizzas does this thing make? Uh, this recipe makes three to four pizzas, depending on how large you make them. Like I said, this dough does need to refrigerate overnight. If you don't want to make four, you can freeze the dough. That works fine. You just put it in the fridge the night before you want to have it, whenever you want, and it's good to go. Flour up my, my cutter a little bit. Be careful, don't cut yourself. Just try to get these, uh, I'm gonna go into fourths here. So, one. I'll stretch back out, go like two right here. And then three and four. All right, now that you have these separated, here's what you do to prepare them for the fridge. Make it into a little ball like this. And then what you do is you push your thumb up under it, like so. And then once your thumb's in there, you kind of pull it out and there's like a little air pocket. And you just want to push the dough up inside it like that. So your goal is to make the top of this nice and smooth. So you, you like pinch it like this, push it up under, grab more from the top, push it up under and keep doing this until it's a nice smooth ball of dough. This is what they should look like when they're ready for the fridge. Time to do three more. All right so we got our four balls of dough ready to go. Um, for the containers you can use little containers like this or this or you can even use a, a larger bowl if you want. It just has to have a little bit of room to rise because it will do that in the fridge. So what you do is you take your olive oil and just kind of, you don't need a lot. You just kind of need enough to kind of like coat the inside and kind of coat the edges. And then you just, um, just drop one in there. And you can do, if you want, you just do a little splash on top of the dough. Like that. And then you take um, a lid or any kind of cling wrap or press and seal, whatever you use, and just cover the top. Holy moly. Just cover the top. And then you put them in the fridge um, for overnight do it overnight or 24 hours in the fridge and they can stay in the fridge for up to about 72 hours so about three days in the fridge in case you don't use it right away that's it that's how you make the dough up next is how to prepare it put the toppings on and how to bake it all right we have our pizza dough out of the refrigerator they've been rising overnight and now you just take them out, put them on a plate or another bowl if you want to, and just drape a paper towel over them, and let them rise for about another hour, and then you're ready to make the pizza. All right, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven. Um, you want it pretty hot. 475 to 500, anywhere in that range is fine. Uh, so the way that I do it is I use a pizza peel and slide it onto the pizza stone in the oven. If you don't have both of those, um, you can just use like a cookie sheet and just place your dough on the cookie sheet. If you do use a pizza 
a pizza pan and a pizza stone. A little trick that you can do is get some cornmeal and just sprinkle a little bit on. <clears throat> and what this does is the cornmeal acts as like little ball bearings to help slide the pizza out like really easily. So just kind of spread that around. All right, so now it's time to stretch the dough. You just pick it up and you can work your way from the middle outward. Um, what you want to do is kind of you know, stretch it out. You want to form a nice little crust area and uh, kind of stretch it however feels right until it's the size that you prefer. So that's what I'm doing now. Kind of getting the shape that I want. I got a little edge for the crust. Try to get some uh, get some air underneath there. Uh, what you don't want to happen is when you put all your toppings on, the pizza dough will like to stick to the board, and then when you try to slide it off, it just doesn't move at all. All right, this is the fun part. You build your pizza however you want. Take a little sauce. Spread it around. Got the sauce on. Now it's time for some cheese. Um, this is hand shredded mozzarella. A bit of advice, don't buy the pre-shredded in like in a package. Because that mozzarella cheese is like coated with some weird stuff that doesn't really melt as well. So you can either buy a little block of mozzarella and shred your own, or you can buy like the like the sandwich slices almost of mozzarella cheese. Those are fine too, because those aren't coated with the weird stuff. For the first one, we are making a traditional margarita pizza, which is just tomatoes, cheese, and basil. So we're putting these tomatoes on. Um, We'll be putting the basil on after it's already cooked because if you put the basil on and then stick it in the oven, it just kind of like shrivels up and doesn't look good. So we've decided to just put it on after it's already done cooking. And to top it off, just a little bit of seasoning. It doesn't need a whole lot because the sauce already has a little bit. All right now it's time to put it in. Oh, we have here a pizza stone. Hopefully I can get this in on one try. So what you want to do is just kind of... Your toppings may shift a little bit if you're not careful. Just kind of do that number. All oh, these tomatoes are not staying there. Alright, we've got the first one in the oven with some... a little bit of trouble. But we got it in there with some help more cornmeal. Use that cornmeal. Alright, now we're switching out number two. You ready for this? Ready? Ready? Yeah! Do it again. <laughs> Hang on, it's kind of sticky. Ready? Hmm. Alright, first one's done. Um, we just kind of pull out onto a cutting board. Like this. Just kind of set it up there, let it sit and set. Sit, set, and cool. You can tell this one's done because the cheese is nice and brown. The crust is a little bit golden. Um, these bake for about 10 to 12 minutes, depending on what temperature you set it at. Pizza number two going in, hopefully. And there's pizza number two, pepperoni, sausage, and mushroom, a classic, one of our favorites.
That pizza was delicious. I really hope you guys try it out. If you've never made your own homemade pizza, try it at least once. It's a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. It's like the most fresh, delicious pizza you will have. Um, Stephanie is actually the one filming all of this in this episode, so she's be <laughs> she's behind the camera this time. But, <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys enjoy the pizza 